Few can say that they've beaten Mike Tyson before. He's topped many lists of the hardest video game bosses of all time, for good reason. The combination of lightning fast reflexes and thorough knowledge of his patterns make him extremely difficult for a casual gamer to beat. But there's a few of us who take this fight to another level. If you get so good at the fight that you can land frame-perfect punches that have a 1 60th of a second window of landing, then you can beat Tyson in the first round. This feat hasn't been accomplished by many, probably by only a few dozen people, but anybody who has done it can certainly consider themselves to be a true master of Mike Tyson's punch-out. Naturally, the record for the fastest round 1 TKO of Mike Tyson has dropped significantly over time, down to where it is today. Today I'm going to show you that progression and explain what changed for each fight to slowly lower the time. To get a really good round 1 Tyson fight, it takes a lot. For the first minute and a half, Tyson throws uppercuts. You must punch him on the same side that he punches you on, then delay your second punch to the last 60th of a second before you would block it. Do that correctly for 9 of the first 10 punches, and you'll have done a perfectly executed phase 1. Of course, Tyson can try to stop you by doing any number of random delays, or even the dreaded 8 second delay, which will immediately kill any attempt. If all goes well, you'd have him down by under a minute. For phase 2, you just keep doing what you did in phase 1. If he gives a fast enough pattern, he'll throw 6 uppercuts, and if you hit at least 5 of them, you'll have a perfectly executed phase 2, and you should be down in the early 130s or upper 120s. Phase 3 is the most difficult phase of them all. He throws hooks until the end of the round. Normally, you'd hit him twice after each one, with each punch doing 2 damage. Instead though, the fastest way to do it is to wait until the last frame before he would block, then throw a single punch that will deal 5 damage. Execute 8 of these in a row without being too early or too late, and you'll have a perfect phase 3. If you miss one early or late, you're guaranteed to lose at least 5 seconds. So, as you can see, there's an extreme amount of both RNG and skill involved to get one of these fights. And the first one that we're going to look at is Matt Turk's 213, which he achieved on December 13th, 2007. Matt Turk is somewhat of a legend in the Punch Out community. He came up with so many strategies and had so many world records that stood for over a decade but he never recorded any of his fights. Generally, his times are regarded as being legitimate, as the amount of knowledge he provided the community backed up his claims, despite the lack of video evidence. The only record we have of this fight was a Game Facts post that he made in early 2008. Based on that, we were able to piece together approximately what the fight looked like, and you could watch MPAP's task recreation of it here. His description of the fight sounded incredible. A 54 first knockdown, a 128 second knockdown, and hitting 6 out of 8 frame perfect hooks in phase 3. For years, nobody was able to match either of those first two knockdown times, let alone hit 6 frame perfect hooks after getting them. For a while, the best footage that we had of a Tyson fight was a 219, which single segment world record holder Sinister 1 achieved back in August of 2012. The execution in his fight matched Turks through the first two phases, but he got a few more delays than Turk did. His first knockdown was a 56, the second was at 132, and four frame perfect hooks in the third phase let him be the second person to beat Tyson in under 2 minutes and 20 seconds. A couple years later, in April of 2014, future single segment world record holder Zallard 1 joined that club too, and recorded a 217 fight, which at the time was the fastest recorded Tyson fight. But Turk's 213 still eluded everyone. We all knew it was possible to achieve, but as time went by, people began to doubt that it would ever be broken. The two top punch-out players in the world at the time, Zallard 1 and Sinister 1, seemed to be mainly focusing their efforts on single segment, and even their best Tyson attempts landed them several seconds away from the 213. Finally though, in July of 2014, Sinister 1 decided enough was enough. He knew that he had the skill to top Turk's 213, and that if he put the attempts in, he could pull it off. He would need a very fast phase 1 and phase 2, and then needed to hit at least 6 hooks in phase 3, as well as get a good phase 3 pattern better than the one that Turk got in his record. So he stopped playing single segment and just grinded Tyson Isles for months, and slowly his time got lower and lower. Whoa, 218! I got a PB. <laughs> Yay, PB! <laughs> cool. All right, I can live with that. 
Wow, 216, dude. Holy shit. I just beat Zaller. Holy shit. <laughs> Yes, dude. Oh my god. PB. Alright, at least I got a PB. Holy crap, man. 214. Wow. And he gave me that awkward delay again. That was basically almost the... Yes! Ah, I tied Turk, at least, baby. I tied him. I tied him, I tied him, I tied him, I tied him. Whew. 213, baby. We in there. The world record has been tied. Ugh, man. I can't believe it. That was my fifth attempt. Attempt number four. After countless weeks of grinding, Sinister was so close. He had tied the mysterious 213 and knew that with a slightly faster pattern, he would be able to beat it. He kept pushing forward and forward, it seemed inevitable that he was about to break through. But not if Zalard one had something to say about it. People were hardly even aware that Zalard was doing Tice Nile attempts, but he was quietly doing them in the background. He said himself that he really didn't expect to get it, but in September of the same year, he beat it by an entire 3 seconds. Phase 1 and 2 were similar to Turk, but he got a slower pattern. However, Phase 3 was executed perfectly. He hit 8 frame perfect punches off of the 8 hooks that Tyson threw. Phase 3 like this had only been executed a handful of times in history by anybody. So the fact that Zalar did it off of a phase 1 and 2 that good was unbelievable. A fight like this is called a perfect Tyson fight, even though better luck could theoretically bring it lower. So that seemed like that could be it for the Mike Tyson fight. Zalar had achieved the first ever perfect fight, and what seemed like could be the only one. The only way that a sub 210 would be accomplished would be if someone matched Zalar's insane execution and got luckier with Tyson's delays, but practically nobody thought that it could happen. Turk's time had been cut, and Tyson had finally been beaten perfectly. There we go. is my PB for second knockdown, I think. Holy shit! Out of nowhere, in July of 2015, 10 months after Zalar's perfect fight, Weijui lowers the time by 2 seconds. At this time, Weijui was relatively unknown. This fight not only proved his skills, but also showed how the Tyson record could still be lowered. It surprised everybody. Zalar decided to try to get the record back from Weijui right after, and it took him a week before he was able to get it. He matched not only Matt Turk's legendary 54 knockdown, 
Get fucked! <laughs> Get fucked, Tyson. And his 128 second knockdown. Oh shit, son! <laughs> oh shit! But proceeded to hit all 8 frame perfect hooks after as well, and finished with a 207. Get fucked! <laughs> You gotta be kidding, dude. Well, this for sure seemed like it would probably be the fastest anybody would ever beat Tyson. A 128 second knockdown was as fast as it could go. As even if you got a lower 128, a 127, even a 126, Tyson would wait until 130 before he started throwing hooks. A high 128 or 129 would be slower, as the clock ticks a bit before Tyson does his next move regardless. The only way to lower the time from a 207 would be to match the luck in the first two phases, or get extremely close to it. Match the execution in all three phases, and then get better luck in phase three. Months passed, and the speedrunning scene for Mike Tyson's Punch Out changed. Zaller got the first ever sub 16 single segment time, which had a 218 Tyson fight at the end, and then I took the single segment record with a 224 Tyson. These lower times were becoming increasingly more common, and the question was once again asked could the Tyson fight be lowered even more? For a while, it seemed like the answer would be no, as Zallard went on a speedrunning hiatus in mid-2016. But then out of nowhere, he managed to get the first ever 53 knockdown on Tyson, followed shortly after by the first ever 52 knockdown. Unsurprisingly, Zallard was able to lower the record by another second in July, followed shortly after by lowering it again on the same day. At this point, it was clear what the ultimate Tyson time was going to be, 2.05. That would involve getting a second knockdown at 128 or before, and then getting a nearly perfect phase 3 pattern as well as hitting every single hook frame perfectly. For months, Sard and I went back and forth trying to get a 2.05. In the process, I managed to get more than 60 of these so-called perfect Tyson fights, but none of them were a 2.05. Zaur managed to get about 40 of them himself. I also managed to get a lower 206 eight times, including four of them on the same day. Finally, in October of 2016, I pulled it off. I got a 54 first knockdown, which had become relatively common by this point, and a 128, which both mirrored Matt Turk's legendary 213 fight. In phase three, I got a nearly perfect pattern. It only delayed once at the very end, and I hit every frame perfect punch. And that was that. In 2012, the best recorded Tyson time was 219, and the unofficial world record was 213. Since then, the record's gone all the way down to 205, and over 100 perfect fights have been recorded by various players. It seems like 205 should be the end of the line for Tyson, but it's not. Remember before how I was saying that it doesn't matter if you knock Tyson down before 128, as you'd have to wait for the hooks to start anyway? Well, while that's true, if you knock Tyson down early enough, you can actually get him to throw an uppercut in phase 3 before 130. If you get this to happen, and you execute the rest of the fight perfectly, then your time would be somewhere between 2 minutes flat and 203. The only issue, to get Tyson to throw this extra uppercut, your second knockdown has to be by a mid-125. Getting this to happen not only requires perfect execution on landing the frame perfect punches, and not only the literal best pattern possible from Tyson, which would have about a 1 in 100 chance of occurring, but you also need to cut your dodges extremely tightly, to the point at which you're nearly dodging into every uppercut he throws. The closest anybody has gotten to having Tyson throw this uppercut was a high 125 that I got, and Tyson was somewhere between 1 and 4 frames away from throwing it. If somebody ever gets this uppercut, and then lands every single frame perfect hit after it, then it will go down as the most legendary fight in Mike Tyson's punch out history by far. Until then though, 205 is as low as it's going. That's all I got for today, thank you for watching.